Yes, very intense. I got, two I got three. One, two, three. One is a recorder and one is a transmitter. What have I got? Two. Long story. It's called Ineptitude City. I don't know, but I appreciate it. Yeah, it makes me look like a cool guy, huh? <laughs> you want to know the beginning of this story? 20 years ago, a little more than 20 years ago, I taught the Luchon Chana, and I would come to class and there'd be 12 tape recorders. There were 20 students and 12 times. I figured if they can record, I should record me too. <laughs> that's how Winsat Hasidah started. That's the truth. How, how do you put it online? I take a sticker and I stick it on. <laughs> you ask a question, you get an answer. What do you want? Oh, you don't like the answer? <laughs> okay, it's not so complicated. Someone teaches you how to do it, and once you learn how to do it, you do it over and over and over and over again, exactly the same way. That's how you do it. After a while, you actually remember how to do it. So you don't have to call them up and say, oh, no, I forgot what to do. I went through that. My website, I found yesterday online a, a mission statement that I made in 2006. Two th <laughs> is that cute? I was looking for something else, and I found this little mission statement for Insel Chassidus. Hey, yeah. we're going to blame that on, huh? Semitism. <laughs> You'll get used to my sense of humor soon. Don't worry. I'm not that crazy. I'm just plain crazy. Not special crazy. Okay, shall we? Stand. What's the problem? This leg or this like this guy here. As long as they're straight here, it's good. Yeah, I'm looking at the cameras. Okay, shall we? Okay. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I am on time. Half an hour late. What's new? <laughs> um, you need one of these. It's very new. Goldenberg, right? What's your first name? Sorry. Here, this is for you. Okay. Anybody else need one? You have these from last he week. Saved, he saved it by me. You saved it by me. Okay. Well. <laughs> no. Okay. That's all I got. Here. You need one also. Yeah, we are the first two. Okay, so then I don't know what to do for them. So, okay, yeah, I guess I guess it's going to. Here. Awesome. Yes, but this one I need back. This is my original. Oh, okay. Okay, kinder, kinder. What are we doing? We're learning about Sayyid Ben Guinness. I forgot how many classes we had, and I'm really putting myself to sleep with how slow I'm going. So I then why am I going? Pardon me? You were going to say? I actually never learned to say that. Been oh. And it's so never said it. So well, cool. so here we go. Okay. We've been sitting on this like forever. So you're walking into the middle, but hopefully you'll get something from it. Um, um, after all of our talking and learning, we've come to a certain understanding of this Patek, right? This Patek is discussing Elohim, the divine name Elohim, which means concealment. But we're not understanding Elohim as a deficiency, we're actually understanding Elohim as an advantage, as a strength. The strength of Elohim is that ultimately, in the end, the perfect world is not a world where a miracle happens because Hashem is revealed. The perfect world is where the nature of the world itself is a miracle. Right? And that's how we're understanding Shema Lekim. In other words, again, we're not making this up. This is based on the commentaries that we researched. This Patek is said after Mashiach by non Jews. And what are they doing? They're singing God's praises in a number of ways. One of those ways is uh, behave. I don't know what I'm doing. He's still not good. That's what he said. <laughs> okay, let's see what happens if I do this. Sorry, people. Uh, okay, yeah. okay, one of those ways is by seeing the hand of Hashem in the world as it relates to the Jewish people. And the second is by seeing the hand of Hashem as it relates to the world as a whole. So last week we learned a pasuk and a half. Yippee, a whole pasuk and a whole half a pasuk, right? There were three ideas. 
there was Chanina, there was Bracha, and there was Ponim. I don't want to repeat last week's class. I want to move along, but it has to do with how Hashem is revealed to the Jewish people. And then we learned the second half of the Pasuk, Ladaz Ba'odetz Darkecha. You remind me when you do the break, I should check you both in, okay? Thank you, man. Ladaz Ba'odetz Darkecha, to know on the earth, the ways of Hashem. So again, if you were here last Wednesday, I gave you two different insights into what derech means, based, of course, on Hasidus and Kabbalah. Again, I'm not making this stuff up. I'm just delivering it. I'm just teaching it. Derech Hashem could mean Hishtashalos, the 10 sweetest, and derech Hashem could also mean the Yud Gimel Mide Sarachman, which is higher than itself, the 13 attributes of mercy. And Ladaz, Ba'orazakecha, means to see in the earth, on the world, the derech, the way of Hashem, in these two ways. Either how you see it in Hishtashos, or you see it in Haydn Hishtashos. This is what we're holding. Okay, so again, we're in the middle of a song. It's a song that's going to be sung when Mashiach comes. And what it's going to really celebrate, what's going to really celebrate is the fusion, is the coming together, is the cohesion between God and world in such a way that you don't have to see as God as separate from world. That's what we're using the name of the Kim as opposed to the name Hashem. You're seeing how the God, God and the world are one. And it's expressing itself in a variety of different ways. And these two psukim, Pasuk Beis and Pasuk Gimel, it's expressing itself as it relates to the Jewish people, right? Alekim Yechanina, Bracha, and Ha'oraz Ponim. And then in this Pasuk, Ladaz, Ba'oraz Akecha, that in this world we should see the ways of Hashem. Which means, practically, Ladaz, Ba'oraz Akecha means that Hashem runs the world through channels. Hashem runs the world through pathway, pathways. In other words, the governance of the world has an order, has a design, has an order. And that order, that design is called derech, the way of God, derech Hashem, the way of Hashem. And the das, but it's like, yeah, to see in this world that path. But on, it, on the earth, you're able to witness the derech Hashem, the pathway of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. This is where we're holding, okay? Now, if you have a book, let's continue to read. Right? I actually mean it. <laughs> We're doing a, a few more words, right? That on the earth, we should know the Derech Hashem, the way of Baruch Hu. Amongst all the nations, they should know the Yeshua. Yeshua means the salvation of Hashem. Yeshua means the salvation of Hashem. Now, girls, I am going to do, 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 how many times more should I say it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, this more, I didn't say it for each one of you yet. I am going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to, two things now. I'm going to give you two lectures, okay? And I suppose what we'll do is this. I am going to say a, a, an introduction, and then we'll break. And after introduction, we'll learn a little till it. What's going to happen is, of course, next week, I'm going to come back and repeat the whole introduction again because we're going to forget, which is <laughs> part of the reason this takes forever and a half. But I'm going to show you two ideas, okay, in, in, um, in understanding what's going on. You need to remember two things. Number one, th there is a separation between Yidin and non-Yidin, between Jews and non-Jews. And there's a presumption that Yidin are on the inside, have a greater closeness to Hashem, and non Yidin have a more distant relationship with Hashem. But there's another truth. And the other truth is that Mashiach's coming doesn't only mean that Hashem is revealed to the Jewish people. Mashiach's coming means that Hashem is revealed to the whole world. And from a certain interesting angle, that Hashem is revealed to Goyim is more important than Hashem is revealed to Yidin. Why? Because what is further away from Hashem is more of an achievement in Hashem being available there. In other words, this Padek is being said by non-Jews. And they're using the divine name of Akim, not because it's on a lower level, but because it's on a higher level. In other words, the position that we're taking in learning this Padek is that when Mashiach comes, Goyim are on the inside. Right? Goyim have a relationship with the Abishta, which is very special. There's never going to be a time when the separation between Yidin and Goyim is broken down, there's always going to be that separation. But there will be the idea that Goyim are going to serve Hashem. Okay, so I want you to appreciate this as we go forward. So I'm going to show you two insights. Insight number one. 
There are two chavre, two guys. They're mentioned in the Chumash. You may have heard of the Chumash. Yeah, it's been printed a few times in many languages, yeah? You heard of the Chumash. You're supposed to laugh now, okay? I'm sorry that I don't have a better sense of humor. But okay, there's two chavre in the Chumash. One guy's name is Yankel Avinu, and the other fellow's name is Esav. Yankel and Esav. They were brothers, and they met. When they met, the... The concern was, the fear was that they would kill each other, they would bludgeon each other. But that's not what happened. They actually kissed each other, right? They hugged and they kissed each other. It's a very dramatic story. And if you learn Chumash Rashi, and certainly if you learn deeper commentaries in the Chumash, you learn that that initial meeting with Yankov and Esau is actually going to repeat itself when Mashiach comes, correct? Pashas Vayishlach, which you have that meeting where Yankov and Esau were supposed that they were going to beat each other up, and they said they kissed each other. So they, in the Chumash it says, Ad Asher Ove Eladoyne Seyira. Yankov says to Esau, I'm going to take my time. I'm not in a rush, but I'll get to say it. I'll come to visit you. Sarashi says, When does Yankov and come to visit Esau? When Mashiach comes. The Haftoira of Vayishlach, in our custom, in the Chabad custom, it's not everybody's custom, is Evadia. Avadi was a gay said, if I one of the tw- the Treyos, the little the one of the, the 12 little books of Tanakh that are bound together in one book called Treyoste. Avadi is one chapter. The entire book of Avadi is one chapter. Avadi was a descendant of Esau. He was from Eden. And he was a prophet of God. And he predicts what's going to happen to Esau at the end of time. In other words, since he's a descendant of Edom, he predicts what's going to happen to his, to his to his nation at the end of time. And the, the passage that we read at the, before Yishtabach, right? The Olu Meishi and Bahar Tzir, Lish Beit Eshar Esav, the Hois Lashem Amaluch is in Avadia. You recognize those words? In the end of Yosha, before Yishtabach, we say the Olu Meishi and Bahar Tzir, and the those who are saved are going to go up in the mountain of Tzir. What was your saying? No, Lish Beit Eshar Esav, the judge of the mountain of Esav, the Hois Lashem Amaluch, Hashem is going to be the king over the whole world. And of course, the point is when Mashiach comes, the Yankov and Esav are going to get together. And they're going to get along. They're not going to kill each other. They're going to get along, okay? So Yankov and Esau met a long time ago. They had his initial meeting. That meeting was charged with a lot of intensity. And it sort of happens okay, right? Nobody gets hurt. But it's a setup. It's a hagdama. It's a, it's a, it's a early version of really, from a biblical, from a religious perspective, of the history of the world, right? The Mashiach comes, Edom which is Esau, and you didn't get together a second time. In the course of that meeting, a lot of different things happen, right? One of them is that Yankov Avinu sends Esau a very, very lavish gift. And they meet, and they kiss. Instead of biting each other's neck, they kiss, yeah? And Esau says to his brother, who is this? Well, the Who is this entire entourage of different kinds of animals with shepherds and the whole thing? And Yankov, you know, says, I sent it to you as a gift, as an offering, as a peace offering. You shouldn't be angry with me. And Esau refuses the gift. Remember the Chumash? Esau refuses the gift. On what grounds does Esau refuse the gift? Esau refuses the grounds on the, the gift, on the grounds, Achi Yeshli Rov. Yeshli Rav doesn't mean I have a rabbi just for the purpose. You have that joke you gotta say. Achi, my brother, Yeshli Rav, I already have a rabbi. It's my pain in the neck. I don't need another one. Yeah. Achi, Yeshli Rav means I have menoga. I have much. I have a lot. Achi, Yeshli Rav, I have a lot. Menoga. So I don't need it. So Yanka responds, no, no, please take it. And he says, Achi, Yeshli Koil. I have everything. I have everything I need. There's a very big chasidus on this rov and this koil. Esau says to his brother, I don't need the gift because yeshli rov, and his brother answers back, please take the gift because yeshli koil. Um, on a very simple level, on a superficial level, on a chitzonius level, on a pshat level, Esau is saying, I'm very rich. And Yankov is saying, I have enough. It's, it's two people talking about their wealth in a way that reflects their personality. Esav is talking about his wealth to boast, to show off, yes, I have my own personal rabbi, and I have a lot of wealth, much. And Yankov says, you know, like the story of the Mithra Marash, is that I have enough, 
I have, I have enough. That's the simple reading of the book. But there's a lot of chassidus on this pasuk as well. And the chassidus in the pasuk is as follows. The trademark of Kedusha is Hiskalalus. The root of the word Hiskalus, which has a lot of letters, is Koyal. Hiskalus means that whatever you own is integrated, is unified into one. You can have real estate, you can have uh, agriculture, you can have livestock, you can have technology, you can have all kinds of different businesses. In, in the realm of Kedusha, in the realm of health, they're all integrated. They're not disparate, they're together, they're one. That's the meaning of the word coil. It's a trademark of Kedusha. That even if you have many things, they're all connected, they're all one. There's a famous, famous Hasidus. On the post of Shema Yisro, right? Shema Yisro, Adinoi Eleheinu Adinoi Echot. Shema means to hear or to listen, to pay attention to, right? But in one place in Tanakh, the word Shema means to gather, let I don't know how you say it in Russian, to bring together. Sabrait. Spasiba. So Shema Yisro means a Yid is about to declare the unity of God. And he begins the statement by saying, Shema Yisro, collect yourself. Before a year denounces the unity of God, the year has to be one. He doesn't want to be disparate. He doesn't want to have a piece here and a piece here and a piece. Another. Shema, collect yourself, you know. Today in psychology, you're talking to a person, you're looking into their eyes. 40% of them is listening to you. 50% of them, 10% is thinking about their, all the people on the Facebook that they're missing on the social media, right? People are disparate. People are scattered. People are not present. Shema Yisrael means collect yourself. That's the meaning of the word koyal. Roiv means much, a lot, but disparate, separated. You understand? That's the meaning of Kedusha and Klippa. Now, um, what does it say? In, where are we holding? You have the other siddha, you have it handy? You have what we're holding the siddha? Yeah, where are we holding? What is the next word you are holding by? What's the next word? No. We're in the middle of a Pasuk. No, before that. We, we only read half a Pasuk. We read... Ladas, but others that care. What's next three words? Bechol goy Mishua secha. What does meaning of bechol? You see what I'm showing you. You see what I'm showing you. You don't say beroiv goy Mishua secha. You say bechol goy Mishua secha. The difference, the word roiv and the word kol, is whether they're disparate, separate, divided, or unified. You understand? Bechol goy Mishua secha means the Mashiach comes. There's a hiskalalos. There's an integration. Between Goyim. You, you appreciate that? You understand that? Yeah? Now, let me give you this is my first introduction. This is my first thing that I want to tell you. And in the next Pasuk, Yiduch Amim Alekim, Yiduch Amim, what's the last word? Kulam. You see what I'm showing you? Kulam Bechal, it's the same word. And the implication is talking about Goyim. And we're arguing that when Mashiach comes by Goyim, there's Kol. There's not separateness, there's not disparateness, which is the nature of Klippa. Everything is by itself. There's a, there's a hiskalos, there's an integration. You understand why I'm telling you this, right? You see it inside. That's what we're holding. Okay, and the, twice we have that word, right? And the pasuk Yiduch has repeated twice. Two pasuk after this, is again, Yiduch HaAmem Kulam. Now, I want to go, I want to give you a different, another conversation, okay? Another conversation, okay? There are three words from Goyim in this capital. Well, what are Goyim called? They're called Goyim, right? <laughs> what does a Goyim mean? Nation. A nation, that's all it means. People get very insulted when you say a Goyim. Trust me, there's nothing insulted. Goyim means a nation, that's all it means. But in this panic, you have three words. Goyim are called Leumim. They're called Goyim, and they're called Amim. Right? You look at the next passage. You do ha. Yismachu v'yerananu lo'umim kisishpeit amim mishay, right? In this pasuk it says, b'chol goyim. In this capital there are three different words that denote a goy. Lo'umim, goyim, and amim. Correct? What do those three words mean? Well, so a little bit I have help and a little bit I'm using my imagination, okay? It's brought actually in Hasidus, okay? Lumim is a higher level, Goyim is a lower level. Amim is either the highest or the lowest. Okay? 
if you want to write these three words down, it would help you keep your head clear. Okay, there's three words that are going to be denoted going in this painting. Le'umim, lamid, alevav, mem, yud, mem, le'umim. Right? It's in Pasuk, hey, Yisrael, le'umim, lamid, alevav, mem, yud, mem. The second word is goyim, which is gimel, vav, yud, yud, mem. And the third word, which is the word most frequently quoted, is amim, ayin, mem, yud, mem. Le'umim, goyim, amim. How do you look at these three words? The umim is higher than goyim, for sure. Oh, what's the difference between the umim and ayin? What is it? Ayin? The umim is spelled with an aleph. Oh, oh, and oh, am is spelled with an ayin. It's a very, it looks, oh, yeah, it's a, yeah, different, it's a totally different word. Okay. The um, the oim, the oim yemats. The oim means a power, really. The oim means a powerful nation. The amim with an ayin means. I'll explain it to you, a pathetic nation, perhaps, okay? But the way I'm teaching it to you, Lum is higher than Goy. Amim is either above both or below both. Amim is either better than Lum and Goyim or worse than Lum and Goyim, okay? I'm going to explain this to you, girls. Lumim, again, this I'm not making up. This actually says in Hasidus. There, there's something called Klippa, right? What's Klippa? What's Klippa? Anybody ever meet Klippa? <laughs> Anybody ever meet Klippa, huh? I walk around with Klippa all the time. He doesn't leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> really? What does klipa mean? Isn't it everything external? Okay, pretty good answer. Anybody want to help me? Klipa, what's klipa? Klipa is God with a shell. That's what klipa is. Klipa is God with a with a klipa, with a sh covering, right? Everything is God. Klipa is how God is covered over, right? That's what klipa is. Klipa is God with a shell. So in Kabbalah, there's a conversation. And the conversation says that in Kedusha, everything goes in the number 10. And in Klippa, everything goes in the number 11. In Kedusha, everything goes in the number 10. And in Klippa, everything goes in the number 11. And there's two reasons why. Reason number one, because since Klippa is covering over God, God is separate from it. Klippa is... God with a mask. So in Klippa, Hashem is separate from the Klippa. So Hashem is the number 11, 11, which is higher than the 10. Does that make sense? Yeah? yeah. If you're going to follow that model, Lu'umim is the number 11, which is higher than the 10. Goyim means Klippa in its form. Lu'um means where Klippa is drawing from Kedusha. You follow? It's taking from Kedusha. Klippa is from Kedusha. But there's another extreme. When you say that Klippa goes on the number 11, there's two ways to say it. A, that the 11th is higher than the 10. And B, that the 11th is lower than the 10. Meaning to say there's bad and there's terrible. Okay, and I'll tell you how this plays out. If this gets too confusing, tell me and I'll repeat myself or I yes, won't give you too many details. <laughs> I love your honesty, but I need a few more minutes before you tell me the truth, okay? Um, Ketidas. Ketidas has 11 spices. Ketidas has 11 spices. Because Ketidas is fixing Klippa, but there's a big question what the 11th one is. The 11th one could be Lavoy Nazaka. Lavoy Nazaka means pure whiteness, which is higher than the 10. Or the 11th one could be Chelbana. Chelbana is in English Galbanum, I think. Chelbana is a spice that stinks, has a terrible smell. If you burn chalbana, you got to walk out of the room. And into the ketodas, they incorporated chalbana. So in Hasidus, when you learn about ketodas being 11, the question is, which is the 11? Sometimes the 11 is higher than the 10. And sometimes the 11 is lower than the 10. So in our conversation, if we're talking about goyim being people, but we're talking about Mashiach coming, and when Mashiach come, b'chol goyim mishuasecha, goyim achieve an achdos, okay? The word lo'um, talks about the number 11 of Goyim, which is higher than Goyim. The word Goyim means Goyim. And the word Amim means the number 11, which is lower than the 10. Because, okay, this is just, um, this is the, the third part. I'm, I don't have a source for the first two parts are written explicitly. So there's the idea that Goyim are connected to Hashem. There's what Goyim are, and then Goyim are separate from the Abish. Those are the three names, Lumim, Goyim, and Amen. Now, why? Something is happening to this guy over here. 
The battery is running low. Do you want to plug me in? Um, why is this? Okay, so the word am, ayin mem in Hebrew has two translations. The word ayin mem in Hebrew has two translations. The word Am, which means a nation, has two translations. Am could mean dark, black. Am could mean dark, Russian oymumis, dying. If you translate Am as dark, Am is a very low name. Going. But you can also translate the word am as emoi, with him. If you translate am as emoi, with him means it's very close to Hashem. This is why I'm telling you, Lumim is higher than Goyim. Amim is either higher than both or lower than both. Amim is either even higher than Lumim, the way Goyim are one with Hashem, or lower than both, the way Amim are dark. Okay, th these are my two introductions. If it was confusing and overwhelming, don't worry about it. I'm gonna try and teach it now and not be too Kabbalistic and technical, okay? The first thing that I explained to you is that usually Klippa is associated with Reish Beis Rav. And over here, Goyim associated with Kol, because that's what Mashiach means, the whole world becomes one, okay? And number two, the word Lu'um is a higher level, the word Goy is a lower level, and the word Am, is either lower than both or higher than both. Okay, so now let's read. Let's read. Um, a goy is praising Hashem. Mashiach comes, a goy is praising Hashem. What is the nature of the praise? The nature of the praise is that in this world you see derech Hashem. You see the channel, you see the pathway through which Hashem brings governance and control to this world and then it says goyim yeshua that goyim see the yeshua they see the salvation of our kaddish baruch Hu, and it affects in goyim ko that the different nations of the world achieve a unity the different nations of the world achieve a ko as they translate it Bechol goyim yeshua that goyim see yeshua yeshua is a fancy level name in kabbalah which i'm going to spare you because i already gave you enough kabbalah for today Okay, Bechol Goyim Yeshua that means Goyim as Goyim exist, see the Yeshua, the salvation of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and it creates an integration, it creates an achtos between Goyim. I want you to think about this. Okay, this is, I want you to think about this, okay? What is required to have order? What is required to have order? This is a philosophical question. What do you need to do in order to have order? Okay, I'll explain to you what I mean. You have a big pile of nuts, right? It's called the taruvis. On Shabbos, you're not allowed to pick a nut out of that pile of that mixture because it's called boire, right? You're not allowed to, yet, right? So what would you require in order for there to be order? The way order works is as follows. Think about it this way, okay? Think about it this way. Oh. Over the history of the world, politics changes. Correct? We can all agree to that. Over the time that the world has existed, politics changes. <clears throat> what is considered a good social order and what is considered a bad <clears throat> social order changes. Correct? Right? For example, in the 19th century, in the 19th century, there was a culture which was called nationalism. What does nationalism say? I'm me and you're you. I'm separate from you. I'm my own nation, I'm my own people. I'm very proud of who I am. I don't want to mix with you. Right? Nationalism. What is the ugliest side of nationalism? What is the ugliest side of the separation from one nation to another? The Nazis. The Nazis were a nationalist party. That's what they were. They were part of that separated Germans from other people. 
So what happened after the Second World War? Nationalism became a big aleda, right? Nationalism is a bad thing. It's not, it's not good to be a nationalist. What are you supposed to be? An internationalist, right? The cosmopolitan person. What does that mean? The philosophy says there shouldn't be borders, right? There shouldn't be a separation from one nation to another nation. We should all get along. We should all mix. Because if we separate, we end up hating each other, we end up competing with each other, but so on and so forth. Does that, did you understand what I just said? That wasn't hard, right? Correct. Now, what does Taita hold? What do you think? What does Taita believe? Does Taita agree that nations should be separate? Or Taita agree they should tear down all the borders? So we have one person who offered her opinion. Didn't anybody argue with her? <laughs> well, it depends on what context. Because the Torah believes that, that everyone should be treated in a good fashion as they're all creatures of Hashem. And the Torah also believes that the, the Jews um, chose the Torah and therefore- We're not talking about the Jews right now. We're not talking, keep the Jews out of this picture. Not Jews, the world. If you have an opinion, offer it. Do you disagree with her or agree with her? No, I agree with that. Oh. Anybody disagree? Come on, no liberals in the room. <laughs> You're supposed to say that the worst thing that was ever created was the wall between America and Mexico. We should tear down the wall. Anybody wants to come into America should be allowed because we ought to be nice. Now, what's the truth? Now, what, what is Taito hold? Now, of course. This is what I think Taito holds. I'm pretty sure this is what Taito holds. I think Taito holds two things. Taito holds that the whole world has to become one. But there is no way for the whole world to become one unless each piece has its own separate space. In other words, if you are one of those people who believes that there's no thing as private property, like I don't own my house, I don't own my car, I don't own my private thing, because we want to share. That creates chaos. It creates communism. We know what communism did, right? Think about it. Which system is nicer? The socialist communist system or the democratic capitalist system? Which one sounds better? You're Russian, so you have a bias. I don't know what bias you have, but you have a bias, yeah? Which, which philosophy of life is, is nicer? To say we all share everything? Or I have private property, I don't want to make as much money. In theory, communism is a much better idea. It's a nicer idea. It's a kinder, there's only one problem. It's not possible. It cannot be. If you take away from all people's self, you have anarchy. So every person needs to have a self. Self has a last name. No self's last name is ish. <laughs> ish. Self ish, me. I have my house and I lock my door. You cannot come in without my permission. It's called division, separation. But if the separation is healthy, there's a door. You can open it and you can let people in. In other words, the way I see it, when Mashiach comes, all the nations of the world don't become one. That's not what happens. The nations of the world remain separate. And everybody goes back to their roots. Right? Like you can go to Israel, a guy who came from Armenia goes back to Armenia. A guy who came from Turkey goes back to Turkey. A guy who came from Africa goes back to Africa. Everybody has their place. They're separate and integrated. In other words, to have health, you have to have two things. On the one hand, everything is separate. But when each thing by itself is healthy, it's able to integrate with other things in a healthy way. And that's the meaning of the words b'chol goyim. There's a lot of goyim. That means a lot of nations. And b'chol goyim says, even though there's many nations, there's a call. And it's connected. It's connected. Only when every nation is separate from every other nation can it healthily integrate with all the other nations. You understand? If you try to take down separations, and you try to say, let's all be the same, that's called rov. Rav means it's mixed up. It's a mishmash. It's a vinaigrette. And Rav is chaos. And in the end, it self-destructs. The Hebrew word that goes along with Rav is taruvus. It's an entanglement. It's a mixture. It's not a good mixture. There's a bad mixture and a good mixture. A bad mixture is Rav. A good mixture is Kol. What's the difference? In Rav, everything is mixed together. In Kol, everything is separate. 
But after everything is separate from a place of strength and able to integrate. Mashiach's coming is Ladav Ba'adah Darkech. Ladav Ba'adah Darkech means, right? The oldest question in Judaism. How many times have I told this to you, girls? Does this world belong to Hashem? Yes or no? Huh? So why doesn't it look that way? Isn't that a good question? Isn't that a legitimate, isn't that a fair question? Don't you have a right to say if Hashem created the world, he's the master of this world, it should seem like this world belongs to him. Nishta Zoi? Huh? <laughs> but you need to understand that that's Mashiach. Mashiach is not miracles. Mashiach is not a gold nugget right now from heaven. Mashiach is the world being as Hashem created it to be. For this world to be as Hashem created it to be, every creation has to be as Hashem created it to be. So you have one purpose, I have a second purpose, she has a third purpose. This nation has one purpose, the other nation has a different purpose. If every nation has its own purpose, separate, then you can have a Chogoy Mishorasach. And that's what this Posak is describing. In this world, you see Derech Hashem, you see that this world belongs to Hashem. And by the way, this is how the Rambam describes Mashiach. When the Rambam talks about Mashiach, that's his whole idea. Mashiach means that we do what Hashem wants. But we doing what Hashem wants means that the world looks like God's world. What is God's world? Everybody is important. Everybody is necessary. Everybody has a different purpose. But all of our different purposes join together into the singular purpose, which is called Bechol Goyim. So that's how you read this posture. In this earth, you should see the way of Hashem. The way of Hashem means there's a path on this earth, which makes the Ebishtab al How does it show itself? Bechol Goyim, you should say, all Goyim see the Yeshua of Hashem, the salvation of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Yeshua is a concept in Kabbalah, which I'm going to spare you. But we cause Ladaz, but because the Goyim see Yeshua Secha, there's Bechol Goyim Yeshua Secha. Every Goyim is separate. That's what Goyim means. Goyim lodged up many nations. Goyim means Goyim. That's what it means. Le'uma means how Goyim are connected to the Abish. Goyim means nations, separate nations. And Bechol Goyim Yeshua Secha means that there are many separate nations, and these separate nations are together. Bechol Goyim. They're joined together because of the Yeshua of HaKadosh Baruch. So this capital is a, is a futuristic song. David HaMalach wrote it, but it's a song that celebrates Shem Elikim. Not that it celebrates Shem Elikim because the Shem is hidden, it celebrates Shem Elikim because it celebrates how you see the world itself be the way the Amish planned it to be. That's like, on this earth, you see Darche Hashem, and it expresses itself. Okay, now it wasn't so bad, right? It took a little while, but I, huh? <laughs> We're good now? A little better? Abisale. Oh, I love you. I love your Russian. <laughs> it's like my Yiddish. Okay, we're good. Now, then what's the next pasuk? The next pasuk is Elikim. The nations submit to Elikim. And then we say a second time, Yiducha Amim Kulam. The nations, again, Kulam as a collective, as an Achtos, submit to Akadish Baruch. Okay, now. First of all, there's two says twice. It says it twice because in this Padek, there's, there's two different observations. This Padek is Goyim observing the world after Mashiach come. The first observation is how they see the world as it relates to the Yidin. And the second is they see the world as it relates to themselves. These two Psukim, the ones we read before, is Goyim observing how the Ebesh relates to Yidin in the world. The next pasuk, Yismuchu v'Iran, if you have the Siddur in front of you, Yismuchu v'Iran al-Umim, ki fishbet amma mishayin ul-Umim ba'odah stamchem salah, this is how the Ebesh relates to the world as a whole, to Goyim. So there's two Yeduchas, there's two different steps of praising HaKadosh Baruch. Yeducha amma l'thim, yeducha m'kulam, for the, for you said before, for how you see in the world that Hashem has a special relationship with Yidin, then you can have a second time you do Chamim. The second you do Chamim is praising Hashem for Hashem relates to the whole world, learning for Goyim also. That's why it's written twice. At least that's how I'm explaining it to you, okay? So you do Chamim. You do Chamim means the nations of the world are submitting to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And then when you say a second time, you do Chamim Kula, that we submit to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in a way of cloud. Okay, so now, 
What does Am mean? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break. I'm going to give you a chance to breathe. I'm going to give myself a chance. But what does Am mean? Am has two translations. Two. Am could mean Oymamois. Oymamois means weak, withering, dying. When you make a barbecue, so you heat up coals, right? Making a barbecue <laughs> requires patience, which is why even though men make the barbecue, that only patience men have, right? You, you, you light the charcoal. You have to wait for it to get hot. But there's no big fire, right? It's just embers. You have to you, you put in a little lighter fluid, and you light it up, and you wait for it to get hot. When the embers turn white, and you blow on those white embers, you see red, then you can make your barbecue, correct? That's called gacholim loichashesh, whispering cold. The coals are very, very hot. Eventually, the coals burn out. And they start losing heat. And as the coals lose and lose more and more heat, you'll blow on them. They'll still be white, but now the white is dust. It's ash. And there'll be a little bit of red left. They're dying. That's called gacholim oimemois, with an ayin. Withering coals, dying coals. So the word am, on the one hand, can connote weakness. Yuducha amem is weakness. If you translate am as weakness, am is lower than the umim and goyim. But the same word am has a different translation. Am means imoy. Imoy means close to Hashem. Very close to Hashem. Like imcha moker chay. So I'll give you an example, right? You ever heard the expression ein melech loyam? Yeah. Hey, right? It's from the Rishonim. It's not from the Rishonim. It's not from the Rishonim. There's no king without an Am. What's an Am? So one man will tell you one thing. Another man will tell you something else. Which is true. They're both true. The first translation of Ein Melech Am is you can't be a king over children. You can't be a king over ministers. You can't be a king over very smart people. You can only be a king over very simple people. So Ein Melech Am is you can't be a nation unless you have an Am. Am means many Low people. I'm from the word withering coals. You understand? But on the other hand, means you can't be a king over animals. Because you can only be a king over people who choose your kingship. So the word am has two translations. On the low end, am means we're weak, we're low, we're far. On the high hand, am means we're very close. We're together with the Kaddish Baruch. Yeducha Amem Melekim, Yeducha Amem Kulam has to be understood this way. The Goyim are observing Ba'odas Darkecha, the seeing in the world, the Derech Hashem, and they're appreciated Bechal Goyim, Yeshua Secha, the seeing how the Abish's control over the world creates a unity in the world. What does unity mean? Everybody has their own place, everybody has their own land, everybody has their own language, everybody has their own culture, which separates from everybody else. And at the same time, there's an achtos between them. And as a response to this, they submit, they thank, they acknowledge as amen. So I try and say, am, yiducha amen. The world praises HaKadosh Baruch Hu, considering how low and how far we are away from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And at the same time, yiducha amen kulam, in praising Hashem, we're becoming close to Him. We're becoming with Him. We're becoming near Him. Not say touch this possible. That the nations of the world praise Hashem from a very low place. The nations of the world recognize the oneness that there is in the world because of their proximity to Akadish Baruch. Okay? So let's break and breathe. Come back in a few minutes and we'll continue. Okay? Okay, let's go. Okay, what's today's serious Ahmed, you know? Very good. <laughs> Very good. Very good. That's the Shabbat Netzach. Tonight, last night. Last night, this is 20. We're right in the middle. Today, Hayyim, Hamisha, also Yay, Hamisha, the SM Yayim, Shaheim. Right, we're exactly halfway with the base chashvus. Twenty-five days. It's netzach shabe netzach. The first day is chesed shabe chesed. The last day is malchus shabe malchus. The middle day is netzach shabe netzach. What does netzach shabe netzach mean? Victory. Okay. What does victory mean? <laughs> Accomplishment. Okay, I like that. It's pretty good. 
Netzach, I translate as determination. And hoid, I translate as stubbornness. So Netzach Sheba Netzach means I'm determined within determined. Right? Next Thursday is Lag Bo'ibet. Right? Today is Wednesday. Next Thursday, eight days from today is Lag Bo'ibet. What's the Svira? Hoid Sheba Hoid. So today is Netzach Sheba Netzach. And eight days from today is Hoid Sheba Hoid. Now, so let's talk about Netzach Sheba Netzach first. What does Netzach mean? I'm going to explain this to you, okay? And you'll see why I'm explaining it to you in a minute. Um, there are six emotional traits, right? Six emotional character traits, correct? So I'll ask you a question. How come Chabad is three and Chagas, I mean, this is six? Chochum bin Das is three, right? Chochum is to the right, Bin is to the left, Teferis is in the center, Das is in the center, right? Chesed is to the right, Gavur is to the left, and Teferis is in the center. How come you have to have two? Six netzach hoid in yisoid. Say again. It has more everything. So why is why is this divided into two? Why can't chesed give word to fetus also include everything? I'll tell you the answer. I'm not going to torture you. I'll tell you the answer. <laughs> the answer is there's two kinds of emotions. There's how you feel about something and how you make something happen, right? You learn an idea. If you like it, it's chesed. Well, if you don't like it, it's gavura, right? If you can't make up your mind, or if you like it and don't like it at the same time, it's the fetus. Chagas, the higher emotions, which not all animals have, right? There are plenty of animals that don't have the ability to experience love and anger, right? The higher emotions, really are telling you how you feel about something. The lower emotions, Netzach Haid Nisayid, which every animal has, and the more primitive an animal, the stronger the Netzach. Netzach Haid Nisayid could be called reflexes. The reflex means spontaneous response, right? How you react without thinking. Netzach Haid Nisayid are emotions of action, right? When somebody comes over to you, what do you do? You can run away, right? <laughs> You could attack them and you could stand still and dare them to push you away. Are we with me? Yes, I can't do it on my glasses. I need you to acknowledge, yeah? Netzach means you get in my way, I'm going to fight with you. Hoid means you get in my way, I'm not going to fight with you. I'm just going to stand and dare you to push me. Netzach is a meat of chesed. It's an aggressive emotion. Hoid is a meat of gavura. It's a stubborn emotion. That's the difference between Netzach and Hoid. Netzach and Hoyd, both of them are called Labarmi Gufa, the outside of the person. The person is what the person understands, and the person is what the person feels. You have a brain, your brain goes out and it researches, it gets information, it collects information, right? Chochma gets information in a seminal way, Bina gets information in a processed way, and Das really decides whether how this information should connect to you. Chesed Gevurah Tefer is how you feel about that information. Chesed means I like, Gvura means I judge, and Teferis means whatever it means. Either it means Racham or it means Simcha, I'm not going into Teferis at the moment. What are Netzach Haidin Yisrael? What I'm going to do about that information? If I learn something, and I have a certain way I feel about that something, when I have to do it, I'm going to encounter obstacles. Anytime you want to do anything in the real world, you're going to encounter hardship. What do you do? You fight. That's Netzach. You be stubborn. That's Hoid. You say they're not explaining either. But that's why there's two sets of emotions. Chagas and he are not six emotions. It's three and three. Chabad is three, the tools of the mind. Chagas is three, the tools of the heart about how I feel about something. And the he is three about how I go out into the world and fight with it. Do you understand? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah? So now, now, think about this. Chabad is the most sophisticated. Would you agree? Chabad is very sophisticated. Using your mind, everything is detailed, right? The muscle for using your mind is fingers. We're, we have fingers, right? And they're not fused, right? We don't have a hoof <laughs> or, a, or a paw. We have fingers, right? One finger is not as strong as a fist. But fingers allow me what's called fine motor skills, right? I can play with this with this pen, I'm not good at it, much better than a lion can, right? Lion has a paw. 
uh, 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 an herbivore has a, has, a, has a hoof, correct? We have fingers. One, a finger is not as strong as a fist, but it's more sophisticated. Does that make sense? Yes? Nihi, nets are hiding your side. They're not like fingers, they're like fists. Why? Because they have to be tough. The Chabad is very sophisticated, so it's sensitive, it's refined. Netzach Hoyd Nyesayid is not defined by its sophistication and its nuance and its subtlety. Netzach Hoyd Nyesayid is defined by their toughness. Okay? So now I'm going to ask you a dumb question. Which is better? Chabad or Nehi? Which is better, to use your mind and understand things? Or to use Nehi and be tough and strong and a survivor? Huh? Circumstance. Huh? Circumstance. What were you going to say? The middle path. The middle path. A, a little bit of this, a little bit. When life is good and you're in a safe place, you want to use your mind, right? You're living in a from community and everybody around you is from, and everybody is good. You use your mind to understand, use your heart to feel right. But what if you're the only from family in the whole country and you want to raise from children? How do you do that? You don't beat them up. You have to be tough, be in action, right? You have to teach your children chutzpah. No, it's true. You have to teach your children chutzpah. Uh, a fellow wrote me a letter. I don't know if it's a fellow or a fellow rat. Don't a man or a woman. It, I, do, I do questions and answers on Insel Kassidus. Once a week, we put up a question. So one of the questions I got was that they're, 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 they're new to Chabad. They're modern Orthodox from home, and they're new to Kassidus. And they love, quote, the Edelkeit and the Frumkeit of Hasidus. The question that they had was that they can't give up their former life completely. They, they stop reading books, they stop listening to music, they stop doing things that are entertaining, and it's too hard for them. They wanted to know what they could do to, to enjoy their old life. And whatever answer I gave them is not an important moment. But when I did this QA, and this person wrote, I love the Edelkeit of Yiddishkeit. I love the from kind of Yiddish guy. So when I gave the answer, when I did the recording, it's up on my website. You go to my website, there's a section called Q&A, questions and answers. It's there, it should be there. I said, to be a from Jew, you can't just be Edel. To be a from Jew, you can't just be from. You have to be chutzpidik. Yeah. chutzpidik. You have to not care what anybody thinks. When people look at you and they pity you because you're dressed sneers, because you're wearing a yarmulke and a beard, I was in an airplane, and the steward says, you know, you got strings hanging out of your pants. <laughs> <laughs> if that happened today, I would say, oh, I didn't notice, but I was a teenager, and when a woman tells me you have strings out, I was embarrassed, I was uncomfortable. You know what I did? I asked her if she has a Bible, a Christian Bible. So she had a Christian Bible, I opened it up, and I showed her inside Titus. That's what I did. I said, look, you see what it says? That's what this is. So what did she tell me? No. Where's the blue? Ah, wow. <laughs> the true story. <laughs> what did he say? Oh, I forgot that part of the story. Uh, yeah, well, we don't have the blue. Whatever I told her. But the point is, my reaction was half me showing off and half me being self-conscious. If you want to be a from Yid in, in a world that's not from, you have to have chutzpah. That's netachad in your side. So now, of course, Chabad is higher than me, right? But Mesidah Snefer doesn't come from Chabad. Lubavitch and Chassidim in Russia were beaten to pulp by Kegebe. So they shouldn't give out the name of another Chassid who was running a Chayde and teaching little children Torah because there was a lot of Chassidus. That, was, that came from the Nihi, from the Netzach, you understand? Chabad is very sophisticated, it's not strong. That's how you say they're not very sophisticated, but they're tough. That's why you learn in the Maimon Basi Lagani that there's a connection between Netzach and the deepest level of the Neshama. The Maimon Basi Lagani, you remember Basi Lagani, right? So part of the Basi Lagani describes a king who's fighting a war. But he's fighting a war that he can't lose. He has to win. Mechamis Nitzachim, right? It's called Mechamis Nitzachim. So the Rebbe, the previous Rebbe says in the Maimon, our Rebbe, of course, develops it in his Maimonim. That when a king fights a warrior, it's Midas and Netzach. What's Midas and Netzach? Today's Sfira. Netzach Shabbat Netzach. Begam Netzach Yisrael Le'inochem Le'ishokek Tiloy Odomu. Netzach doesn't come from your mensch, from your Odom, from your brain. 
Netzach comes from your ma'oid, what's above your seif. So Netzach hiding your side are the lowest levels of the Nishan. Netzach hiding your side, forgive me for saying it, we have in common, even with what's called in the world of biology and evolution, primitive animals, right? Which animals have chagas? Huh? Monkeys have chagas. Higher emotions. To feel love, to feel fear, to feel ten elephants, for sure elephants, dolphins, sophisticated animals, right? But many animals are fight and flee. That's all they are. What fight and flee means? You see an enemy, either you stand and you hope he doesn't see you, like a rabbit. Yeah, you stop or you run away. There's, there's not a lot of thinking. There's no time to think because they stop to think they're, they're in somebody's lunch. Of a split second, reflex, that's the heat. It's the lowest level of the nefesh, but in a strange kind of way, it has the power of the whole nefesh. So when you have a brain and you have a heart and you have a nehi, so on the one hand, the brain teaches the heart, the heart inspires the nehi. But when you engage your netzach, you have a koyach which is stronger than the brain. It's stronger than the heart to fight off every kind of obstacle. You follow when the Rebbe sent shluchim. Yeah, today shlichus is so well established, Baruch Hashem. But when the Rebbe started 60 years ago, it was incredibly hard. They had to use shtus the kedusha. They had to use the chatzil adiv. Right? You heard all of these slogans. What do those things mean? What do they mean? Everybody in the world is going to tell you you're wasting your time. Everybody in the world is going to make fun of you. Everybody, you know, Moshe Fellas or Sanger Zutenstein tells the story that when he met uh, Valvel Green for the first time, he walked into his office. Valvel Green, Professor Valvel Green. I don't know how familiar you are with Lubavitch. Google Valvel Green. He has a number of books. Yeah. Which he describes his relationship to the Rebbe. They're must reads. They're very interesting. He's a good writer. He was a big professor, Valvel Green, Professor Valvel Green. He was a biologist, but he has a number of books. Well, it's not published by Chabad, but he was a Chabadnik. He wrote the books privately. He's now deceased. You should read it. They're very beautiful books. I think they're very important. I think all high school. Velvel Green. Anyway, so the first time we met him, he walked into Velvel Green's office, and Velvel Green says, Rabbi, you got to get rid of the black hat. You got to get rid of the black jacket. You got to cut that beard. You have to put on a tweed jacket and wear a bow tie and whatever, whatever he told him. And every fellow listened with such kabbalah. <laughs> he didn't argue. He just listen. Okay, get rid of the hat, get rid of the jacket, get rid of the beard. I mean, of course, the, the whole chabad is that I'm not changing me. I'm changing you. <laughs> not true. You know how much chutzpah that takes? Come to a modern secular community where the most religious Jews are come, come, reform, and you're wearing a full beard, a ganze board, with a shaitel. And a black hat, Rahman al Sad, and a black suit. You look like a, a pariah. You don't fit in at all. And instead of them telling you what you should do, you tell them what they should do. And they listen. Why? That's called Netzach. That doesn't come from Seichel. That comes from Netzach, from toughness. You understand? Now, Netzach is aggressive. Hoid is stubborn. Hoid is akshanus. Today is Netzach Shabbat Netzach. Yeah. In eight days from today is like Boheme. Right? Like Bohemian, the Shemir Chai is day. Hoi Chibahai. Shemir Chai was the biggest Chach in the world. Shemir Chai was a big Tadik. Shemir Chai wrote the Zoya, right? And what is Shemir Chai's Svira? Hoi Chibahai. How does that work? How does that work? Stubbornness. Shemir Chai was a big Tadik. He was a big Chacham. But in his Tzitkas and in his Chachma, he was so connected to Hashem that he knew that the real relationship with the Abish is not his brain. It's not his heart, it's his hardness. It's his echida. You understand? So now I'm going to ask you a funny question. And you don't really need to answer it, but let's ask it just for fun. So who's stronger, Netzach or Hoid? Who's, <laughs> who's stronger, the guy who fights with you, who, the guy who says, I'm not moving? Prove it. I'm going to tell you the answer because the Shemar Choy passed away in Hoi Chaba Hoy, not Netzach Shemar Netzach. If Netzach Shemar Netzach, today is Koi Boimer, today is the 25th Svina. In eight days is Lag Boimer, yes? If Netzach Shemar Netzach was a harder Indian than Hoi Chaba Hoy, the Shemar Choy would have passed away today. Now, I, I don't mean what I just said, but you get the point, right? 
In my body, I see this hoite of hoite is the ultimate me. Do you know why? I'm not understanding. I'm not feeling. I'm being stubborn. What does hoite shebe hoite mean? That I'm doing my stubbornness with the stubbornness. Stubborn shebe. I'm stubborn times stubborn. Meaning I know that in order to be a yid in this world, you're not going to let people make fun of you. People are going to make fun of you. They're not going to let them get you. As I told you, you can't just be sweet and able to be a yid, especially if you have a you have to have chutzpah. Chutzpah. Not to bite the other guy's nose off. Not to care what they say. It's, 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 it's a big deal. One of the things that we never ever talk about is how much courage they have. They go into a world where everybody looks different, and everybody dresses different, everybody sounds different, everybody thinks different. They come into that world, everybody looks at them like they're funny. And instead of their changing, being changed to the people around them, they change their environment. It's an amazing koyach. That's netzach, that's hoid. Hoid is stubbornness. Hoid shev hoid means I'm being stubborn, and the motivation for being stubborn, not because I understand they should be stubborn, is another stubbornness. You understand? There could be chokhma shev hoid. What's chokhma shev hoid? My seichel understands I need to be stubborn. There could be chesed shev hoid. Chesed shev hoid. I love Hashem so much, I know I should be stubborn. Hoid shev hoid. My stubbornness is rooted in a stubbornness. So why am I being stubborn? Because I have an ishama. It's a chidduk of the kami, mal mamish. It's a piece of a shev from above mamish. What does that mean? I don't have to learn how to have a relationship with Hashem. I don't have to develop it. I have to uncover it. And in my neshama, my connection to Hashem is not limited to reason. It's not limited to the higher emotions. It has a hardness. It has a toughness. It has a chutzpah of the lower emotions. So a yid could be an action. A yid could be stubborn in doing the will of Hashem and the motivation for the stubbornness is a stubbornness itself. If I had to learn how to be a Jew, if I had to learn how to be a Jew, right? Let's say I joined the movement, okay? I'm going to say some bad words. Let's say I joined the, the Democratic Party. I'm a Democrat or the conservative the Republican Party or the Communist Party or the Anarchist Party or whatever party you want to join. I joined that party. Why did I join that party? Because I like the platform, correct? Right? right? Like the so I study their ideas. Their ideas agree with me. I agree with their ideas. So I joined the platform. But then I find that after I joined the platform, I don't really agree with everything. It's something that I don't like. It's complicated. Everything's complicated. Or to say it differently, that if I join this platform, other people are going to call me crazy. You're a Republican fan. You're too smart to be a Republican, huh? <laughs> huh? So what is the answer? Hoid. I committed myself to a certain belief system and I stay in that belief system. I remain with that loyalty with an Akshanas. But where does Akshanas come from? It comes from what I learned. It comes from what I studied. Because if I don't, there's a basis for it. So if I join a political party because my brain comes to a political party, there's no such thing as Hoid Shabbat Hoid. There can only be Chokhma Shabbat Hoid. But a Jew doesn't learn how to be Jewish. He uncovers Jewishness. It's inside. That's the tight hoi chabahoi. So think about it, right? How, what is the greatness of the Rebbe? What is the greatness of the Rebbe? Of our generation. What is the greatness of the Rebbe? He was a big chacham. He knew so much title. And he understood it so deeply. He understood Kabbalah. He understood Hasidis. And all the reasons for all the mitzvahs. Yeah. And Lahav Elf Abdos, he understood all the other chokhmas in the world, secular knowledge. He knew all those other things. He had an incredibly tender and sensitive heart. He was able to tune into each individual person and feel what they're feeling and give them what they needed, right? Correct? Where does the Rebbe come from? Where's the strength of the Rebbe? In his Hoysha Bahais. Yeah, but if you're such a smart person, why are you wasting your time with Hoysha Bahais? You're a smart guy. What's the terrace? Yeah, it's all very important. But the strongest connection that I have with Hashem is not my brain, it's not my higher emotions, it's my actionist. That's why a tzaddik and a chacham and a gon, like a shimba, you understand? You understand? Now, why am I telling this to you? Because the word yoiducha is hoid. Yoiducha am malakim, yoiducha am kulam. That's what we're learning. 
You understand? Yeduch are the nations of the world submit. Yeduch amem kulam, the nations of the world submit together. What does it mean to submit? What does it mean to submit? Submit is, the word submission in this case means stubbornness. Submit means I'm not doing it because I understand. I'm accepting. I'm a, you know where emun, emun is, right? Emun is yeducha. Now, you're a smart person and you're a thinking person and your own discriminating mind, if your own ability to judge, your own ability to determine, your own ability to figure out. So why are you submitting? Because there's more strength in the submission than in the understanding. Maybe first you understood. Maybe first you felt. But what is it? You do ha'amalukim. You do ha means go and submit. They, right? We say every morning, moidani lefanach. What's that moidah? Shtotakoi moidah. Thank you. Right? But, but moidah means much more than I think. Moidah means I acknowledge. I recognize. I don't know how to say that in Russian. But it also means I'm stubborn. Moidah is haidah. This is true. I admit that this is true. If you're going to come to me and ask me many questions, and I'm not going to be able to answer those questions, so I'm going to get bewildered. I'm going to get confused. I'm going to get uh, pushed out of my own orbit, put in my own, my own spin, my own rotation, my own way, right? If I have a strong moide, so I'm not going to really answer, but it's not going to change my belief. Because moide ani because my relationship with the Abish is based on the submission. Here we're reading the capital film that Goyim are saying, amim. The nations of the world say, This is Emes. Amim elikim. The nations of the world submit, they acknowledge, they have a Muna, they become stubborn about Elikim. What does Elikim mean? There's a guy in Israel who listens to my classes, who harassed me till I translated the Lakim, the God of nature, and I, he made me nuts. So I said, <laughs> God, Lakim does not mean the God of nature. It's not true. It means the God of concealment. The God of nature means it has limitations. What does the God of concealment mean? That you don't see God, and you're looking straight at him. What's the difference between a miracle? And a miracle, you see Hashem. Ashgach Pratis, you see Hashem. What's the difference? A miracle comes from Havaya. It comes from outside of nature and changes it. Ashgach Pratis means the world is the world just the way it was before. But now you see, what did we say in the past before? Ladaz Ba'aretz Takecha. You look at Teva and you see that it's run by Hashem. So you do Ha'amim, the nations of the world acknowledge, they submit, they have a Muna. In a lakim, what's a lakim? It's not a miracle. It's not a miracle. It's the world. But this world is God's. If you remember the class I gave you before Pesach, it says in Chasidus that there's a shame of lakim which is higher than shame of There's a name of a lakim which is higher than shame Hashem. Why? Shame Hashem changes the world, it comes from outside and it changes the world. A lakim means the world is just you and I see it, we see that it's the Abishtas. Let me ask you a question. If every single guy in the world was honest, never cheated, never lied, if every single guy in the world was hardworking, okay? if none of the guys in the world had problems with alcohol, if they never lied to their husbands, they never lied to their wives, yeah? And they never abandoned their children, yeah? Is any of that a miracle? Every normal, normal, yeah. It's the biggest miracle in the world. You know why it's a big miracle? Because it's a miracle without a miracle. The sea isn't splitting. The Yamsuf isn't splitting, right? Water's not turning to blood. Frogs are not multiplying by being bit on the, hit on the head. You understand? When no miracle happens and Hashem is the Balabayas over the world, that's what this Elikim means. You do Cha'amim Elikim. Goyim, the world submits to the truth of Elikim. Elikim means the world as we see it is God. 
not because of a miracle, not because of a change, because it's Modaz Barzakecha. On this earth, you see the path of Hashem, that Hashem is governing as well as He wishes. And as I explained to you in the previous class, what is that path? Right? Every Yid lives in Israel, and every Chinaman lives in China. <laughs> And every uh, Bulgarian lives in Bulgaria. I, don't know, I mean, I don't, according to tell you, there's 70 nations. In the United Nations, there's over 200. So exactly how that's going to work when Mashiach comes, I don't know. But there are 70 nations. And every member of each nation goes to live where he belongs. Just like every year goes to Etisro. If you're a Chinaman living in San Francisco, you move back to China. If you're an American living in Australia, you move back to America. Now, that sounds weird. And I don't have a proof of this, but that's what I believe. I believe that's what Mashiach means. Everything has a place. Everything goes back to its place. But after everything goes back to its place, then you have by creating healthy divisions, you create the framework for proper unity, proper integration. That's like all Goyim have a Hiskalis. It's Goyim Washarab, it's many nations. But there's a unity. You know why there's a unity? When every Goy is where he's supposed to be, doing what he's supposed to do, he's able to get along with every other Goy. But if I'm doing what you're supposed to do, and you're doing what she's supposed to do, and we're all competitive and jealous, it's a, it's a confusion. It's a rob, it's not coil. So when the guy sees this, the nations of the world submit to Allahim, to Hashem in Teva. And it's called Yudukha. What does Yudukha mean? They accept that this is true on the level of Amuna. A level of Hoyt. Hoyt Shabbat what does it mean, Yiducha? They don't understand, or they understand. They don't feel, they feel. So if you're a smart guy, or a smart guy, yeah, and you understand, and you feel, why do you have to submit? What's the answer? Because the submission is stronger than what you understand. The submission is harder than what you feel with your higher emotions. You understand God, you love God, but your relationship to him is not based on your understanding. It's not based on your feeling, it's based on your moida'ani, on your submission, on your acknowledgement that this is true, but the hardness that comes from the deepest place in the nefesh. And if we're understanding this paid correctly, and again, believe it or not, I'm not making this up. This says in the Mepharshim, after Mashiach comes, this capital is being sung by Goyim. But not as being sung by Goyim because Goyim on a lower level. Like I explained to you in my first class, Goyim is seeing it because they see Elokus in Teva. The nature of the world itself is God. You do Amim Elokim, and then you have a second time you do Amim Kulam. That the submission amongst the nations is Kulam. It makes them one. Which you could explain if you wanted. By why should we get along? Why should we get along? Huh? <laughs> why should why shouldn't we fight? Huh? I'm asking a question. Why should we get along? Why should we not fight? Because fighting is stupid. And fighting is destructive. When two people fight, right? Who wins? Nobody. When two people fight, one loses less than the other. If you and I fight, right? And you broke my hand. And I made your eye black and I broke your leg. So it's two of I won because I lost less than you. So it makes sense we shouldn't fight, right? But what kind of peace is that? What kind of peace is that? It's not, we don't get along. It's better for me that I shouldn't fight with you. It's better for you that you shouldn't fight with me. So we don't fight. What kind of peace is that? You understand? To get along means I have to not, not fight with you because it's not in my better. Because I have to appreciate the need. I need you. I need you. That's what the word kula means, right? You do ha'am and kula. So you could translate the idea that every human being in this world knows that he needs every other human being in this world because he understands it. Every human being was I never the human being because he feels it. And every human being in the world is I never the human being. You know why? Because Hashem created them. So you do ha'am and kula. The nations of the world relate to one another, not because they understand, not because they feel, but because of heita. Just like this, you do ha'am translate, you do ha'am translate. We all acknowledge Hashem in the nature of the world. We all acknowledge the need for one another on the level of Haidah. 
You follow, you understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? We get along. Yeah, a couple gets married. It always works. Yeah, everyone gets nervous and happy. We love talking about marriage, but then we don't want to talk marriage because it makes us very uncomfortable. I know the whole program. Yeah. Okay. A couple gets married. Yeah. I want to ask you a question. Is their marriage going to last because it makes sense? Is their marriage going to last because they love each other? Or is their marriage going to last because they're committed to marriage? My father always says, I, I, I used to almost say many, many years ago, this goes back almost 40 years, in a place called Canal Hardware, there was a man named Mr. Weiss. Mr. Weiss was a child of the Holocaust. He grew up in a convent. He grew up in a convent among his going in a church. He told me that as an adult, as an adult man, he found out that he has relatives in Williamsburg. He told me himself. So he called them up. They were chassat machasidim. He was not from at all. He called them up and said, my name is Mr. Weiss, and I'm a cousin of yours from Ungarin. He was a child during the war. His parents were killed. He grew up in a convent. And he asked if he could come to see them. And they were very nice to him. They opened up their home. He said, I walk into the house and I smelled latkes and I remembered my mother. He forgot his mother. He forgot how his mother looked. His mother used to, mother was from, mother made latkes. I walked into the house, I smelled latkes and he remembered his mother. That's an unbelievable story. So he once told me, he says, marriage is like this. A religious marriage is like this. A marriage is like this. He was a very expressive man, this Mr. Weiss. A religious marriage is like this. Now, what's the pshat? The pshat is where people get married, they're in control, they choose to be married, they fall in love, and they fall out of love. Religious person, Hashem stands over with a whip and says, stay married, I'm going to hit you. Yeah, that's the pshat. Yeah. <laughs> you do what I say, I'm going to bash your head. In other words, if I'm a secular person, I get to choose myself. If I'm a religious person, that's not the pshat. The pshat is when a secular person gets married, they're getting married for what they have in it. When a firm person gets married, religion, marriage works not because you're committed to your husband. You are committed to your husband, and I pray to God you'll love him and he'll love you. Venice, it's supposed to be that way. Marriage works because you're committed to marriage. You're going to have moments when you hate him. I promise you. You're gonna, ah, you want to kill him. You're not always going to feel the way, but it's going to happen. And I hate to say it, I'll probably feel the way about you also. Then there'll be times that you feel very close to one another. How do you get through the tough times? Hoid. <laughs> Hoid. We got to be together. You understand? In other words, the most difficult parts in the marriage work because they do. In the end, when you look back, when you're 50, 60, 70, or 80, and you're still married to the same person, and your children growing up and giving you nachas, you're the richest person in the universe. A couple who has a good marriage, if it were, unfortunately, most marriages in America end in divorce. But if you actually stay married, the, the peace that you have with that person is so deep. It's so deep. It's incredibly deep. It's unbelievably deep. It's deeper than anything in the world. It's so deep. You, can, you know, the, the deepest love in the world is love between a mother and her children. What about a husband and a wife? It's incredibly deep. The base for that depth is hoid. Not chokma, not chesed. Hoid. You do chamun kulam. So here's the pasuk. Mashiach is coming. Yes. So das ba'ores darkech. They see on this earth the derech of Hashem. That Hashem is running the world. So they say you do chamun. There's a there's a submission. There's a moid ani to elikim. Hashem is not revealing himself. Hashem is not dazzling them. Hashem is doing any miracles. This world is God's. Such a wicked man. That the idea that this world is Hashem and all the people in the world are A, separate. Separate. My house, your house. My room, your room. Right? I once heard a psychologist said, you love a person very much. Yeah. Do you share toothbrushes? Why not? You love her so much. What's it, Teddy? <laughs> the, the way you're together is by being separate. Right? That's what you do. Ha'am and kulam. Is that nice or not nice? nice. Uh, Very nice. Good. I'll see you in a week. Chazak. Yes. At your own risk. Thank you very much. Be well. Chazak. I'm listening to you.